Today is Friday, the 26th of May, 2023. A month after building these wing stands, I finally have something that is the basic shape and dimension of a wing hanging on the full 114 inch span of the wing stands. Uh, super excited to be to this point. I've been working steadily for the past month just to get to this point. It's been um, a lot of work and today I get to do another one of these. I built a left wing, I might as well build a right wing. Uh, I'm gonna do it a little differently than I did this one in terms of the technique. Um, what you saw yesterday, the lessons learned from that should make today go a little bit more smoothly and uh, have the right wing hanging on that set of stands by the end of the day. So I'm super excited uh, to be at this stage right now. Uh, that, that's a lot of work to get to a point where you can identify that you are in fact building a wing and not just some random parts scattered across a workshop. So anyways, I'm gonna get into it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate your comments, your feedback. Um, the channel is growing, which I'm very happy about. Um, I've had some great interactions with some of you and I'm looking forward to more of it. So yeah, let's get into it. Pretty much a repeat of the day before, only a little bit better. By the way, that funky looking kind of video action that's happening on the right side there, the way this camera was set up, the light outside was so bright that it just blew this out. So I kind of had to mask one side to get it bright enough inside. So that's what that's all about. But anyways, uh, you saw me taping along those reinforcement bars on the main spar just to make sure that they don't get banged up by the bucking bar when you're doing those upper, the uppermost and lowermost uh, rivets on some of those, um, some of those ribs. But getting it all together, you notice I left a lot of the ribs out because I'm gonna do one side at a time. And this is the bit where I shave down these uh, dash five uh, rivets to what would be about a dash 4.5. Um, I told you in the previous video that they're just too long and they get tipped over easily. So uh, basically I started out with a five rivet and then compared it to a four and split the difference. And when you see when I push the new one through here and measure it with a rivet gauge, the tail, the shank, is exactly the right length for a uh, AN474 rivet. This turned out much better. The riveting overall turned out much better. Um, but here again, you can see that I have skipped all of the um, all the flan or sorry, all of the ribs with the flanges facing in the direction that would force me to rivet left-handed on this side. So this gives me a lot more room to work while I do all these uh, right-handed and uh, there were a couple two I think rivets that um, didn't turn out well and part two so now I've flipped it over and I'm installing the rest of those ribs and still able to rivet right-handed um, with it turned over this way yeah overall this day was four hours and 34 minutes i think compared to eight plus hours the previous day that's the difference <laughs> in knowing what you're doing the second round so this this went much better not only did i have to drill out fewer rivets but just the quality overall of the work was much better um not to say that there weren't uh, mistakes made and i did have to drill out some rivets um but again uh just yeah much better uh Riveting with that double offset is not easy, um, but necessary. Uh, I've said before, you can bend those flanges out of the way, but only so much, or those ribs rather. So, uh, yep, yeah, just getting the rear spar clicoed on here for riveting. And then these, of course, are all squeezed rivets. Um, squeezing all the down the line although you will see me at the very end um the end nearest to us is inboard the very end down here those last uh two ribs in the wing walk area ribs one and two 
use really long, like uh, eight sixteenths uh, rivets. Um, I took great care in setting them, and when I was done, I realized that I actually, being so proud of myself for setting them well, set two extra ones, ones that need to be saved later for the flap uh, brace. <laughs> so, and those were really difficult to uh, remove uh, because they are in such a narrow spot right there between those two ribs there so i don't think we're there yet but uh yeah pretty soon you'll see me struggling to get those out that sucked and i um the holes look pretty good but not perfect i might have to uh drill those up to a larger size which seems like i don't know how i'll be able to get those rivets set if i go up um from a four to a five on a really long rivet um but that's how it goes. Um, that's a problem for another day, but they're out and uh, we can move on from there. And, that, and that's what you see me doing right here is getting those those last two out. Um, once that's done, I go down to the other end, do the flush rivets um, where uh, the, the very last uh, rib number 14, get those flush rivets set. And then um, it's ready to hang. Um, and so I kind of did a special here on how I um, built the bracket uh, that will attach to rib number 14 near the spar so I can hang it. And that's coming up right here. So that piece of uh, aluminum angle, it's uh, eighth inch thick um, by one inch wide. And then that's a five inch section that I've cut out. And I've just, you know, made some fairly general measurements that are going to put me in the right spot. Uh, to take it back over and get it lined up on that last rib, um, centered on that last rib, which is not hard to do because you've got that middle rivet hole to kind of gauge off of. What I'm trying to do is set the height so that the that bracket itself is sort of an extension of the of the web of the spar. Uh, and once I'm confident that I've got it, I just match drill that rib. That's three sixteenths, by the way, um, which is what the plans call for. Three sixteenths seems really tiny. Um, if you go into a big box store and look for three sixteenths bolts, you won't find them. It's a number ten uh, screw, um, but it is what they what Vans recommended. So that's what I went with instead of something larger. Uh, next up would be a quarter inch, I guess. So, yeah, got that all attached, and it's nice and sturdy. And then I'll go ahead and hang it up on uh, hang it up on the wing stand here. Coming up in a second once it's all screwed on there. This also went much faster than the day before because I wasn't reinventing the wheel. And get it onto the wing stand. Um, the near end I will uh, clamp down just for security. Uh, it's not going anywhere, but get it all clamped down. And then the other end, uh, I think I explained at the end of the previous video, uh, there's, at least not with any of the clamps I have, there's no way to really clamp um, that piece of angle onto the other end. So, <clears throat> just drill a couple more 3 16 holes straight down through that angle into the bracket and use a couple of those 3 16 screws as basically pins like i'm not screwing them on there that's not going to go anywhere so just drop them in like pins it's basically just to um hold the whole thing securely onto the wing stand in case like i'm looking down like an idiot and walk straight into the spar so that i don't uh knock it off and i don't want to start over again um, you can see, I think at this angle that obviously the middle of that span sags, that's 114 inches. I want to say, uh, between the two posts and, um, once it's all secure, then I work, um, on just getting something underneath a rib in the middle of the span to take that, um, sag out of it. And right now I just have temporary stuff there, but now that I know, but the distance is I'll probably fabricate a little wood block um, to get it within, you know, maybe like a quarter of an inch of the actual 
distance and then use uh, wood shims to take the rest of the tension out. So interesting what the autofocus is doing. But that's it for episode 51. Nailed it.